This is very exciting. This is called Make Me, it's called Marvel Make Me a Hero, where we welcome Marvel fans to chat with us and uh, you know maybe think about their ideal superhero, what that would look like, what that would be, and then we surprise them, which is not so much as a surprise because I'm telling you about it, we surprise them with that character, their own character, it's so cool. We need an artist to do that. And to do that, we have one of the greatest artists, a pal of mine, Todd Nock. Come on up, sir. Todd, how you doing? Doing good, doing good. Yeah? Yes. What are you working on right now? Uh, right now I'm working on Infinity Wars Sleepwalker. It's a spin-off of the Infinity Wars story going on. And uh, I also have a Spidey uh, comic book, Spidey School's Out, coming out in trade paperback here next month. Very cool. Uh, in the issue of Sleepwalker that came out this week, you had to draw how many eyeballs? Uh, the writers wrote tidal wave, so I, I lost count after 432. It, my eyes just went blurry, so there's a lot of eyeballs in that comic book. So we have heroes mashed up with other heroes. So Little Monster is Hulk mashed with Ant-Man. The, the angrier that Scott Banner gets, the, the smaller he gets. The smaller he gets, the stronger he gets. That's happening. That's a real thing. I'm excited. Now, we want to do Marvel Make Me a Superhero right now, and... We need a lucky fan. Fortunately, we found someone. Our lucky fan is someone who mixes food and Marvel for us. Please, let's welcome Justin Warner to the stage. What is keeping you busy right now, Justin? Uh, right now, being here at New York Comic Con, uh, hanging out in the uh, Marvel Lounge over there, talking to everybody, and preparing for new episodes of Eat the Universe. What is Eat the Universe for anyone who may not know? So Eat the Universe is kind of a crazy show. Um, I'm, I'm a cook. I guess by, by trade, but also a Marvel fan. And uh, basically, we invite another Marvel fan onto the show, generally someone who's more famous than ourselves. And then we sit there and we talk about comics and we talk about what is cool about heroes. And then I make a dish that is inspired by their favorite hero. Okay. So say, for example, you're really big into Wolverine. I'd say, all right, well, let's see. Wolverine has claws. Okay. Uh, Wolverine can regenerate. Uh, what in the food world can regenerate and has claws? And then we'd say, I'm making you... Crab Louie. I don't, I don't like that at all. Uh, but <laughs> you're terrific. Uh, we're going to do uh, Eat the Universe here? Yes. Okay, great. Saturday. But that's not what we're doing right now. Right now we're doing Marvel Make Me a Hero. I need you to have a seat. Oh, boy. And, Justin, you can't look at the screen. If you look at the screen, I'm going to gently kick you in the shins. Okay. Okay? My that's, shins are sensitive. That's good? So, yeah. um, what we're going to do is you're going to describe your ideal superhero, and then okay. Todd is going to draw it. Now, maybe you, uh, you can feel the, the pull of the screen behind you. I do. But do not turn around, okay. you monster. OK. All right. So if you were a superhero, what would your character look like? Uh, probably like myself. Um, I like to describe my build as uh, slender, but having had a few beers. Or milkshakes. Yeah, milkshakes, sure, depending on the audience, yeah. I've had, you know, y you never trust a skinny chef. That's the bottom line. Why is that? Well, because obviously they're not eating enough to, you know, to, to prove that they're enthusiastic about food. Okay. Right? Yeah. Uh, Imagine if Chef Boy Boyardee was a waif. You know, we wouldn't be... <laughs> Maybe he's hit some hard times. Maybe it's been <laughs> a rough couple of years for the pasta business. So, yeah, it's fine. What about the hair? I really... Like, I want you to describe your hair. My hair or the character's hair? You know what? Either or. Both. Well, um, my hair kind of has a mind of its own. And uh, I, I think that that's, uh, I think that that, I don't know if that's more me or more the, the professions that I've worked in where, you know, running a restaurant, being a chef, it's like you need something to grab onto every now and then you know, to just kind of support yourself. And you look so much more dramatic, you know, holding a big clump, a big shock of air, you know. And also, it, it's, I'm a little wild, and my hair's a little wild. It's an extension, you know? How much product goes in there every day? I use two dime-sized amounts. OK. I, <laughs> right. I use a lot of mustache wax right here, and it's not working today. It's just, oh. it's, I can't tame it. Do you, ever, do you ever hit it with a hair dryer first? On my face? No, you, so you, you hit the, uh, the wax with the hair dryer, and oh. then it melts the wax and makes it more I easy see. to apply. That makes more sense. Uh, I want to dig into a little bit about your superhero. What is, like, what's the heritage for your superhero? Uh, I mean, for me, like, I'm pretty much, like, nondescript, uh, you know, European descent. Uh, my family was originally from uh, 
Ireland, Germany, uh, England. I wish there was a lot more to report there, but I don't know. It's just, just boring there, I guess. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, let's talk about the character's hair a little bit more, like the specific style, the color. Maybe? Oh, yeah. I want, I want Todd to be able to play with the superhero with the color palette and all the different things. Ooh, Todd's up on the screen. He's huge right now. Oh, no. And I can't turn around? You, If you do, so help me, Justin, I will okay. not stand for that. Okay. I, I didn't realize this would be I would be as nervous as because there's this huge thing happening behind me. Yeah. And I can't look. It's all dependent upon you. Okay. So hair. Um, I like to describe my uh, hair color as chestnut. I don't know if that's on the uh, palette. Todd, do we have a chestnut color? Todd says, yes, we have chestnut. Everybody, get excited. Chestnut is in the building. Chestnuts are actually uh, coming into season very shortly. You'll be able to smell them uh, roasting. One of my favorite uh, New York kind of iconic foods, really, chestnut. I'm, di I'm a little disappointed you didn't just pull out some chestnuts from your jacket. Uh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Call Squirrel Girl. <laughs> <laughs> so chestnut hair. Yeah, and I, I think some, some volume but also a little mania. You know, like I, I, I try and, and look somewhat refined but also somewhat stressed or wild or out there or you know curious that's what i go for in a hairstyle is something that's a little head turning but then you're like i don't know if that looks good or if i should be scared okay you know a little fear is good yeah you know i think that um it, chefs in general have like it, it, there's a lot of show to it think they wear those tall hats you know they wear always white you know and there, there's something about being uh pristine but yet a little wild you know that that's, I don't know, that's what I think about. Okay. Yeah. Um, let's, w eyebrows? Uh, like, oh, I don't you know. know. Like big shocking eyebrows or like tame little, you know, like wisps? I, I think, um, you know, like a curious eyebrow. I like, to, I like to like lift one eyebrow up, you know? Kind of like The Rock or somebody, but, you know, animated eyebrows, animated. Todd has a question, which eyebrow should be raised? The left. The left, Todd. Thumbs up from Todd. We're getting a left raised eyebrow. I need to know with The Rock which eyebrow he raises. Yeah, yeah does anyone know? The left? The left? Confirm you are The Rock. Awesome. Right. I smell what he's cooking. Uh, all right. Well, I want to talk a little bit about the, the costume type as well. Todd okay. is, uh, I wish you could turn around because Todd is really going to town on this. He's getting into the face right now. Is he going to Flavor Town? I don't. Is that is that PG plus? Is that yeah, 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 yeah. Flavor yeah, yeah. a real thing. Yeah, Ooh, it is. Yeah. As a chef, where is Flavor Town? Uh, Flavor Towns. Uh, I'm actually on this show called Grocery Games. Uh, it's hosted by Guy Fieri. I'm a judge and uh, oftentimes competitor there. And so when you're making delicious food, you get yourself a ticket to Flavor Town. I like the name drop there. You're just like, oh, look at my friends. <laughs> no, I think you might have more Twitter followers. <laughs> uh, so Todd is is working on the face right now. It's really cool. Uh, is there any sort of mask or anything, or is you really just want your face to be visible? Yeah, you know, I I don't I don't personally I'm not a masked individual. I I like to be out in the open, and I like to, you know, I don't I just don't like to hide, and I don't think that my hero would would like to hide either. I think he'd want to be held accountable for his actions. Where did you fall on the uh, superhero civil war? Oh, uh, I was definitely on Cap's side. Okay. Yeah, I know, but I. I I get it. Yeah. I know that that's a contradictory thing, but um, I, I just feel like that's who I am, you yeah. know? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have you sit here awkwardly in front of this wonderful crowd. I'm going to go talk to Todd. Oh, see no. How he's, do not turn around. Do you hear me? Sure. The audience will let you know. You have 100 people out yeah. there to if he starts keep me around, accountable. You yell. Todd, how are we feeling right now? Uh, feeling good. Feeling good. Uh, so w what is this process like? Uh, I saw you started sketching just a body, and like, is it always you go right to the face first? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I, ever since I was a little kid when I started drawing, I'd always start with the face or the eyes and then build out from there. Um, different artists have different approaches. Some do the torso, then add the head. I always start with the head and then, and then work my way down. Um, so I started with a, a base. A base um, Did you just erase it? Oh. Just. So I have a base sketch here, which I, I lowered the opacity. So that's, that's just my rough body sketch there with some costume elements. Then I lower that to, so I can do the, the finer details over that. So we'll turn back the final, finer detail layer. Now this is just a quick uh, costume design. So when, I, when, when an editor, like when I had to do a design, Little Monster, or 
man thing thang thum for Sleepwalker, I would submit sketches. So instead of spending the full time, since we only have 30 minutes here, I just want to capture the flavor. The flavor that was in it, totally inadvertent because we used Nailed it in it. comics. Uh, the, the flavor of the character, of what what the editor and then readers could e expect with the character's design and costume. So we're just going for the high points here, the, 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 the quick notes. Got it. All right. I want to go talk to Justin a little bit more about the costume because that's where you're starting to get into now. Justin, how badly do you want to see this? So bad. Do not turn around. I don't know that I've ever been this restrained in my life. It's a, kind of anathema. Like, I'm a bon vivant, you know? I see something and I say, I got to do this, you know? Uh, to our producers, can we get Justin a t-shirt that says, I'm a bon vivant, comma, you know? Um, <laughs> I, I like that. Let's talk about the costume. Yeah. Obviously, you know, a superhero needs a cool look. Yes. Where do you want to start? What, do, what, what part? Maybe the, the what does the torso look like? Uh, I mean, I think you go for kind of a futuristic take on a chef coat, you know? Um, there's something that I think is very rad about the way the, the traditionally chef's coats button kind of a, I think they call it like double breasted, so it comes all the way over here. But you also have this like built-in vent. And I think that if I were to imagine this superhero in a fight, you know, he would start buttoned up, you know, but by the end of the fight, you're starting to see some wear. Just like, uh, you know, when you're cooking a long shift, you know, eventually you're going to get stains, splatters, you know. But every night of crime fighting starts out with a nice pristine white chef coat, maybe some padding, maybe some upgrade. And then from there... Don't, you don't. should see this, I don't, dude. No, don't. <laughs> every look of excitement, I'm watching everyone, and they're all having big reactions, and then I'm, I'm just paralyzed. <laughs> uh, how many chef's coats do you have at oh, any given time? I mean, at any given time, I, I think at, at a, high, like a high point, I had about 15 that were mine. And then when I had my restaurant, uh, you know, we had, everybody had some sort of coat, white, whatever, you know? Now, I have on here in my notes, the costume colors are white and houndstooth. Oh, yeah, houndstooth, yeah. What is houndstooth? It's, houndstooth isn't a color so much as it is a pattern. Uh, I'm looking around to see if anybody's got any houndstooth on. If you have houndstooth on, come forward. I should have worn it. But basically, houndstooth is like the pattern that you see in chef pants. And w the reason I believe they like houndstooth is because it actually hides uh, like mistakes, crustiness, you know, a sauce, oh. whatever. Uh, and so, yeah, I'm, man, I'm looking for houndstooth. But, yeah, it's just a pattern that's really popular, and I just love it. You know, it's like in, in the same vein as, like, seersucker or something like that. Sure. You yeah. Know? We got, if you're, if we you're got into patterns. Excitement for seersucker over here, so real yeah, good. I like uh, patterns. So I really want to show you what Todd's working on, but, uh, like, what about a belt area? How do you feel about pouches? I'm pro pouches. And yeah. honestly, I think – so I actually started out as a waiter way back when. And I used to turn my, my waiter's apron backwards because it looked more like a cape, but also because nobody, I don't know if anybody thinks like this, but I didn't like coming up to the table and having my, like, notebook and my pens and all of that stuff right in front of someone. I'd rather have it behind them. So I looked more like a human being and less like, I don't know. So I wore my apron backwards, and I continued to do that as a cook. I almost rarely ever, like, it's only for, like, a TV thing or something where I have to be normal that I wear an apron in the back. And I think we're, we're all naturally inclined if you get mess on you. Hey, look, that guy's got houndstooth right there. Hey, they, give it up for houndstooth. <laughs> Nobody cares for <laughs> houndstooth, but you're awesome. Thank you. So, yeah, anyway, um, I don't know. I like the idea of pouches up front, and I like the idea of maybe an apron slash cape in the back. Okay. You know, it's like uh, that movie with Sylvester Stallone. It's a switch, you know. He, yeah. can, he can cook aprons in front, but when it's time to fight, aprons in back. Party time. It. Like a stormtrooper. Yeah. Uh, obviously, chefs have tools. They have instruments. They have oh, yeah. uh, what they use to make the amazing dishes. What, like, do you see maybe some, some knives on the belt area? Yeah, I can definitely. I mean, I have a knife roll that I carry with me. I actually have one in my hotel room. And so, Please like, don't bring it here. No, we don't. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, and so the knife roll is a classic chef accoutrement, but I definitely think knives are going to be part of this. I think every job need, has to have a new knife, so I think every, you know, he has to have enough knives to take care of the situation, you know, whatever that may be, whether it's paring something or whether it's butchering something. Okay. Now, what, like, what kind of pans do you use? Me? Yeah. Uh, so like, is <laughs> I've got a word on here that I don't know what it's called. Sharpie. Rondo. Rondo. Oh, Rondo. Yeah. Yeah, so I'd love, I'd love my hero to use kind of a la Captain America, 
a rondo. Is anyone familiar with a rondo? It's a type of pan. Anyway, it's a gigantic flat pan that has two handles on either side. And like a classic joke that we would play on people is to sneak up with someone with a rondo and, uh, and a wooden spoon. And <laughs> it's like a gong. <laughs> Why would you do that? Because that's what you do in restaurants. One time I hid in the dirty laundry so that when this kid grabbed the dirty laundry, I, the bag moved. <laughs> and he, we just play pranks all the time. Okay. All yeah. right. I, I think your superhero is a little bit more straight laced than maybe you are. Yes, definitely, okay. definitely. Well, give me some other some other items and props and weapons that your superhero might have. Right. Um, let's uh, see. Let's like see. Like, what do you use that you think a superhero could find useful out in the field? He's got his pan. Oh. He's got his knives. Yeah. Um, so, uh, we love <laughs> blue painters tape. I know that sounds weird, but blue painters tape is really good for labeling stuff, labeling food. But I think that. Every chef who would see this character would be like, oh my god, he's so legit, he even have, has blue painter's tape. And the reason we use blue painter's tape is because it's easily removable, but also because no food is truly blue, only artificially colored things. Think long and hard, and you won't find that blue. And so... Bananas. If, right? <laughs> what? Are you uh, colored blue? Like turkey meat, right? Blue, blue turkey. Yeah. Well, I'm not coming to right? Thanksgiving at your house. Yeah, don't worry about it, we're good. But anyway, um, that way, if it were to fall off into the food, you can see that it's there. So it's a safety thing. Cool. Yeah, yeah so I sense. like that. And I mean, I don't know. I think that there are so many things that could prove helpful. Like, I love offset spatulas. What is an offset spatula? An, uh, so you have, like, in your mind, if I say the word spatula, you're either thinking of the rubber thing that you used to scrape, or you're thinking of the pancake thing that you used to flip. Well, I, I often shop at Spatula City, and so I'm familiar with all the different accoutrements there. Right. So an offset spatula is kind of, like, used to frost cakes. But you okay. can use it for so many more things. So it's got a very flat, thin, flexible blade. Got it. Like a bottom paddle. Sure. Yeah, never mind. Don't worry about that <laughs> one. Uh, I, I, I want to think about a little bit more about, all right, so we know you have uh, the chef outfit up top. Yeah. You know, what are the pants like? Because pants for a superhero, super important. They got to be flexible. I'm sure pants for a chef are yeah. super important because you have to feel comfortable for the hours you're on your feet. It's true. So uh, I wear clogs all the time. Uh, as you can see here. Are I, those clogs? Yeah, these are clogs. Okay. And um, so there's a lot of reasons to wear clogs. You can take them off very quickly in the event that you were to, say, spill hot grease into your sock or into your shoe. Uh, they're also leather, so if you were to drop a knife, you're okay. And you can also stand on your feet for hours, so I love clogs. But then in terms of pants, you know, when you're on the line, you want something ventilation, probably a little baggier than most. I'm not saying, like, MC Hammer lever, level baggy. Or... Or maybe really baggy pants. Maybe really baggy pants. Yeah. Either way. Either way. Good. Um, what about your knees? Are you ever, when you're a chef, picking up stuff, like going, kneeling down much? All, all the time. Yeah. Do you need knee protection? I think it would be smart. You know, I, I, here's the thing. I think as a chef, maybe not so much. But I think if you're going to be a crime-fighting hero chef, most definitely. Okay. Most definitely. Cool. Uh, I, I want to go talk to Todd a little bit. Uh, okay. You, again. Just do. If you do, if you turn around... I just, I don't think we can talk anymore. Okay. But I do need to talk to Todd. All right. All right, Todd. It's been eight minutes, and you've almost finished. How are you feeling? I'm feeling good. I want to add some color to this, too, so he gets a little, a little more pop. But, uh, yeah, I'm feeling good. I was wondering if he hit, there was any powers, or is he more of a vigilante type? Or does, does he have any special super, or super hero abilities? You know what, Todd? You read my mind, because I was going to go to his powers right after this. We're on the same page. Uh, just to, like, let's tee, Justin, where are you looking? Uh, Look at the crowd. I, I'm looking over there. Do not. not. Okay. Uh, I want to know, from your perspective, what kind of colors are you thinking of before we get into the color? I'm really leaning towards a lot of hound's tooth. Yeah! <laughs> Actually, no, mostly white. Uh, when it comes to drawing comics, unless we have, like, a pattern that uh, colors can drop in there, I don't know if drawing a houndstooth pattern is, is ideal from panel to panel, page to page stuff. Maybe in the Marvel movie, houndstooth never ends. But in the comics, we'd have to find a new kind of workaround for that, probably in the color coloring uh, aspect. Got it. OK. The gear, the gear, the knives, the pans, all these things that y'all have been talking about, we'll be able to get some, some of those uh, adding some accentuating colors. Fantastic. This is looking terrific. Let's go back over to Justin here. This is very, like, classic Kirby style character I'm looking at here. I dig it. It's real good. It's really? Real good. Oh man, I'm uh, pumped. So Todd brought up a great question. He wanted to know what kind of powers 
do you think this superhero would have? So I've kind of thought about this, maybe, perhaps maybe too much. Um, <laughs> so imagine something like, so there's this kind of miraculous way of cooking called induction. Are you familiar? Uh, where you put your hand in the oven and then uh, you just grip. Kind of. That's grandma hands. Okay, grandma hands. Yeah. Grandma hands. Chefs have those. Grandma hands. So induction is where you use electromagnetics in order to heat the cooking vessel. So it's kind of a neat thing because the, the thing that's causing the electromagnetic field doesn't get hot. The actual pot does. And so that works with anything that is ferrous, in other words, containing iron. And so I would like to see that push to the max. Like, imagine if as a power you could heat up anything that has iron. I'm not saying, mag like, not magneto, but I'm saying heat it up. So, for example, if there's any iron in your microphone, I could give you a literal hot mic. Please don't do that. Right? Yeah. But the reason I like that idea is because then you have knives, you know, and then you can have hot knives. And I really like the expression, like, imagine this guy, like, fighting a villain and being like, like a hot knife through butter. You know what? Wolverine just came back, and he's got hot Heated claws. claws. I know, I know. I, I, I swear I, I thought of this before that. Even though, even though I do love the variant that Mr. Todd drew where he's barbecuing with these claws. So I like that, but I also like the idea that you could do it in things around you. So, you know, I, as a chef, I generally prefer not to run, but maybe there's a car chase. Mentally, I can melt a street sign and have it go down in, in front of the car, okay. right? But I don't want this power all the time. I think you, it only happens when my chef hero character is enraged. So kind of like the Hulk. So you have this Hulk kind of Magneto but heat combo thing going on. I just want to tell you that maybe that relates to something about Wolverine and his hot claws too. So it just feels like you're stealing ideas from Wolverine. No way. This isn't totally... It's, or... Ask anyone. You're brilliant and was thinking of this well before Wolverine came back. We'll see. Does he really get angry when his... We'll see. We'll see. It's, You'll have to read Return to Wolverine. It's Watch hashtag secrets. Hashtag secrets. Well, yeah. So I like this. And I also think that, you know, there is like this duality of chefs where, you know, you have to keep your calm composure, but you're in a rage-filled industry, you know, and people are out to like insult you regularly. And I, I don't know a single chef who doesn't... You know, they can say, oh, I don't have a temper, but... Everybody secretly harbors a little bit of temper when you're working as the leader of a restaurant, you know? For sure. This is coming together really, really well. Todd's making some crazy moves with him. Uh, any other powers or, like, does he? is there a Kirby Crackle or anything like that that we would see around this character? Uh, if no, that's okay. I, no, I like I, the, the focus. You know, like, I play a video game. Sometimes I give them all the powers. Right. But this one, very focused. I like that. Yeah, and I just, I could see myself using this you know like um i don't know sometimes i feel like chefs need to blow off steam like i and i think that i could literally see this character like getting so fed up his blood boils you know he's got to go like go into the walking cooler and chill out that's what we do you know what if he had like a friend who was an ice themed like like a uh, uh, like a dessert chef i love pastry it chef and it was i love like, it you know chill out and he right gave him some ice cream yeah i would name him vacheran that's one of my favorite. What is that? It's a dessert that involves meringues, ice cream, and or sorbet, and chantilly cream. And Vacheran. Bananas. But doesn't that sound awesome? It does. It does. It sounds pretty great. Okay, Vacheran. Yeah. Let's uh, go. Uh, what other, you know, like, strengths or, uh, like, ideals would this character hold? Right. Um, well, I, I definitely think that I, I'm obsessed with the sense of smell because... Smell basically lets you see invisible things. I know that sounds crazy, but if something smelled weird, you wouldn't be able to see it, right? Necessarily. Right. So okay. your nose is like lets you see this invisible world, and that's what I, I love about it. You know, if a steak didn't smell good, you'd be like, ah, yeah, that's Ugh. that's not a treat. Yeah. But if the steak smells good, you're yeah. like, I love this thing. Yeah. Right. So I, I want to give you a heads up and Todd a heads up. Yes. That we're at the five minute mark. That's only five minutes left. Todd, how you feeling? You good over there? He's great. Uh, oh, man. So Todd is getting going. This is good. He's throwing some color on there. Really? Really, like, making this come together. Wow. Yeah. Uh, what do you, when you're thinking about this character, what about his, his nemeses? Oh, uh, uh, nemeses. Oh, I got you. Oh. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> in New York, at least, uh, I would say one of the biggest crime organizations is the New York Department of Health and Mental Hygiene. <laughs> uh, Justin does not speak for Marvel Entertainment. That's totally else. true. 
It's totally uh, true. And he's talking about the fictional character that the he's creating character, here. Yeah. And the fictional Department of Health, DOH. Yes, the, the DOH. The, the and DOH so villain I, organization in your fictional world, yes, Justin. Yes, in the fictional world. It's not a racket at all. And so the DOH I can see being led by a character I like to call Hygiene. Wait, so the Department of Health and Hygiene are villains? Yeah. Okay. It's, it's corrupt in this world. What if you're the hero of your own story, but you aren't necessarily the hero? Hey, I like that. I can, I can work with that. Uh-oh. 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 This guy's got a, like a cute smirk. He's excited. He's, he's a nice guy. I don't know. But doesn't the word hygiene think about it? It doesn't sound fun. It, does, it sounds evil. Hygiene. Ah. There's a lot to unpack here. Yeah, I don't know. I've never liked that word. It always it always sounds actually unsanitary to me. It sounds sterile, and I don't think that that is fun. Like, hi, I'm a bon vivant. I love things that are sterile. You know. I want to. Do we have, have you thought of names for this character? I mean, of this of this character, I have. Your character, yeah. Yes, of my character, I have. Okay. What do you What do you got? I. Because I think I, I want to know uh, the name of the character, and then maybe like. Is he with a team? Has he got any uh, cohorts or people that he rolls with? So I thought about this a lot because I, I tried to think of something new, but also something that conjures other ideas. And so I came up, at first it was Angry Chef. But I, like, Angry Chef, it doesn't sound as exciting as, say, Raging Chef. Yeah. And so like Raging Chef to me is just like, it, it implies that he's very good at his job, but also yeah. that he's, uh-oh. You, you, you keep talking. I want to okay. get over here because I want to... I want to be next to Todd when we reveal this to you. Are you guys ready? Like, let's reveal this. Todd, you okay? Can we reveal it to Justin? All right, Justin, turn around. Yes! 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 yes. Look at this. This rules. Look at the f little fork. I got you. Tasting spoons. I love it. I would not, like, I would not want to mess with this guy at all. Like, I wouldn't. Do you want to get hit by one of those pans? Heck no. Justin, what is the name of this character again? Raging Chef. Raging Chef Todd. He looks so good. How are you feeling about this? Feeling good. Feeling good. Yeah. For a quick sketch, very happy. A quick sketch is a completed character, fully designed. Todd, you are a magic wizard who does magic wizardry. Thank you for this. Oh. Justin, what are you going to do with this now? It's going to be my avatar forever. All right. Everybody give it up for Todd Nock. Give it up for Justin Warner. And this is Marvel Make Me a Hero. If you guys like this, let us know. There's a small purple-haired lady over here. You can tell her. Uh, and you never know, maybe one of you could have your own hero in the future.